This is the Bartholomew Town Podcast. Hey everybody, welcome into another episode of the Bartholomew Town Podcast. It's Bill Bartholomew here with you as we return to our Inside Rhode Island Public Health series presented by Commonwealth Carolines Rhode Island with a conversation with the Executive Director of Meals on Wheels Rhode Island, Megan Grady. So, I mean, obviously, Meals on Wheels is one of those hallmark programs of goodness, right, in our society providing, well, principally, when you think of them, they provide meals to homebound seniors. But it's a more dynamic, more complex program than that, and they've got a lot of highlights to offer, particularly, you know, when we think of public health now, we're thinking of it in terms of pre-pandemic, during pandemic, and as we move into hopefully what will be known as post-pandemic, And the shifts in terms of operations, the shifts in terms of understanding the acute uh, needs and vulnerabilities that our society faces and the challenges that can be overcome through rethinking and reimagining public health from a variety of perspectives, right? Including food, which is so basic and so essential, yet is something that I think a lot of people take for granted. And for Meals on Wheels, they have found, well, you'll hear the number. It's a, it's an astonishing number in terms of the amount of meals that they have served. So thanks, as always, for joining in. A lot coming up this week. Hopefully you had a great weekend. Newport Folk Festival over the past weekend. I was there. I'll have some additional recap stuff for you later this week. Plus, you can check out my coverage across social media. Also later this week, congressional candidate on the Republican side, Former Cranston Mayor Alan Fong and Stefan Pryor, the former Commerce Secretary, now running for General Treasurer as a Democrat. That's all ahead this week on the Bartholomew Town Podcast. But for today, Inside Rhode Island Public Health, presented by Commonwealth Carolines, talking Meals on Wheels with Meg Grady. Inside Rhode Island Public Health is brought to you by Commonwealth Carolines, Rhode Island. Commonwealth Care Alliance, or CCA, is a multi-state integrated care system influencing innovative models of complex care nationwide. CCA's Uncommon Care model focuses on sustainable and evidence-based health care breakthroughs that improve the health and well-being of people with significant needs and is consistently recognized as one of the best models in the country at identifying and serving traditionally hard-to-reach individuals. CCA is excited to bring Uncommon Care to Rhode Islanders with a range of Medicare Advantage plans. To learn more, visit www.commonwealthcarealliance.org backslash Rhode Island. Hey guys, with the increasing legalization of cannabis across the country, including most recently here in Rhode Island, the cannabis industry is growing at an accelerating pace. If you are already in the industry or wondering what is the best path to break into the cannabis field, well, the University of Rhode Island has a program to help educate you in the evolving space. Fully accredited by URI's College of Pharmacy, the online certificate program covers topics related to product development, chemical analysis and testing, and patient and customer therapeutics. The application deadline for the fall session is August 2nd, coming right up, and courses start on September 6th. Learn more at uri.edu slash online slash cannabis, or give them a call at 401-874-5280. Well, thank you, Bill, for having me on today's podcast. I'm Megan Grady. I have the privilege and the honor of being the executive director at Meals on Wheels of Rhode Island. Many people, probably your listeners today, are familiar with our home-delivered meal program, but our mission is to meet the nutritional and special needs of older adults to help them maintain their independence as they age. That's such a critical element of public health, obviously, that is, you know, when we what we learned in the pandemic was so vast um, in terms of the infrastructure of our public health, in terms of the equity and so on and so forth. But something as basic as food, you know, fits into that same category as shelter. That's it's so critical. And I guess that's sort of fundamental to your mission. Well, let's go back to 1969 when Mr. Joe Brown founded Meals on Wheels of Rhode Island. He started with 17 seniors, one route just in Providence, and a handful of committed volunteers. During the pandemic, we operated without disruption, which is something we are incredibly proud of. Our volunteers were delivery heroes, but we surged to as many as 4,000 home delivered meals a day. Just in 2020, we served 500,000 meals. So when you think about that evolution, 17 seniors, one route in Providence, to serving as really a public health organization that was activated during a critical time for older adults, we have come a long way in our 53 years. 
That's incredible. And so much dropped off considerably in so many different sectors during the pandemic. It was obviously the most one of the most enormously challenging components of all of our lives. But, you know, if the acute need for what you provide must have been highlighted in such a specific way at that point when the barriers of access to even for the average everyday person for for food was was so limited, never mind someone who was the most vulnerable, at least in terms of age group and category in that moment. You know, Bill, when I think back on it, I actually can't believe it happened. (laughs) We had celebrated our 50th anniversary in 2019. And we had talked a lot about being a different Meals on Wheels of Rhode Island. So when we came into January of 2020, we were focusing on increasing our visibility, raising more money, and thinking about how we could be more modern as an organization. We never anticipated what the pandemic would mean for older adults. But because we had this energy around innovation and this spirit of modernization and thinking about how we move the organization into the future, we got involved very early on. Um, we, I think it was the first week of March. And there's a little bit of a longer story behind it where we had kicked off a fundraising campaign and it was very public and very community based. And as we learned about how the pandemic was going to disproportionately impact older adults, we immediately had to suspend that campaign. And so what we did is focus on the response. So it was March 3rd, 2020, that we started our COVID-19 response. We would not have been able to do it without the leadership of our board of directors. The state, which provided us very early on with resources, um, and then our volunteers who were delivery heroes, our clients who welcomed us at their homes during a very scary time. During the pandemic, we were the only people that many of our clients were seeing. The individuals we serve, they're homebound. And often as a result of that, they're isolated. Um, So, you know, they either don't have family, family living out of state, or in the case of the pandemic, if they had a son or daughter, a family member, a neighbor who worked in a nursing home, worked in a hospital, right, worked in a grocery store, it then limited their opportunity to receive care at home. Um, So, you know, now this month, this year, we are starting to wind up our pandemic response. And we can talk a little bit about what that reemergence means for our organization. And as we pivot from, you know, really emergency response operation without disruption to what the future holds for our organization. Yeah, I'm really interested in that. You have some interesting programs, Capital City Cafe, a senior restaurant program, even a pet food program. That's so it's robust. It's 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 not just, you know, some people might think of Meals on Wheels as like, all right, it's literally in the name, you know, just somebody going down the street dropping off meals to seniors. But it's 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 more complex and more dynamic than that. Yeah. And you've done a really nice job of sort of acknowledging our Hallmark program. So our home delivered meal program, that is more than a meal. It's a life saving safety check and an opportunity for socialization. There is evidence, research that has been conducted by the Brown University School of Public Health that shows that a Meals on Wheels program, now here in Rhode Island, we're an independent 501c3, and we are independently operated by a board of directors, so everything we do is by Rhode Islanders for Rhode Islanders. Meals on Wheels not only addresses social determinants of health, it also helps reduce things like nursing home admissions, hospital stays, ensures that older adults have a safety check. Um, So in many cases, if one of our clients has fallen, we intervene and and either help them, call a loved one, call EMS, but save their life. Mm -hmm. So I could go on and on about the benefits, the public health benefits of our home delivered meal program. In that program, we have two special initiatives that address our social isolation strategy. That's our pet food program. We currently have 20 older adults who, when they receive their meal from Meals on Wheels, every other week they receive a bag of pet food. Hmm. And that helps them with their small dog or cat. I mean, again, our clients are homebound, so they have trouble shopping for food, preparing for food. Um, but these pets are what are bringing them love and joy. And so we want to make sure that they're eating their meal, right, and that there's food for their pets too. And then we have a senior wish program. I absolutely love this initiative. 
During the holidays, we serve over 250 of our clients with surprise gifts, whether it is items that they can um, use to brighten their day, crossword puzzles, coloring books, puzzles, um, or little things like toilet paper, paper towel, hand cream, warm socks. Um, the list goes on and on. And we work with corporate partners um, to collect gifts around the holidays and then distribute them to our clients. And we have gotten so much feedback this is the only gift I'll receive this year. This is the only gift I've gotten in years. Wow. And so it's not only wonderful for our clients, for our volunteers who are delivering these gifts, it's incredibly exciting. And then there's our Capital City Cafe program. Again, this operated without disruption during COVID-19, but it operated a little differently. It's social dining in community settings at places like Federal Hill House and Martin de Porres all located in Providence for more mobile seniors who would benefit from a senior center dining atmosphere. And there's health education and resources and all sorts of great things that accompany that meal. And then our restaurant dining program, we have great partnerships with two of Rhode Island's finest dining establishments, the Newport Creamery and Uncle Tony's. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Through Meals on Wheels, older adults can purchase a reduced cost voucher to dine in a restaurant. And so that is a hard pass at the public health interventions that we are offering statewide to help older adults here in the Ocean State live nourished and independent lives. Yeah, and there's a statistic that jumps out. 90% of your clients are homebound Rhode Islanders. Of those clients, 91% are at least age 60 or older. And of those clients, more than 50% are at least 80 years of age. Well, Bill, I know older. this wasn't in the pre-read materials, but last year we served 23 clients who were 100 years or older wow. living independently at home. Um, it's incredible. I can't imagine the experience of someone at this point in time who is 100 years old or older and mm -hmm. what they've seen in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. And th that interaction is a two-way street, I would imagine, when you're delivering a meal to someone, anybody, but... Let's be honest. Like, yeah. that's that's an incredible perspective. I'm really happy that you bring this up because I actually had an opportunity to visit with one of our homebound clients who was 100 years or older. Maybe it was at the beginning of the summer. Um, and it was really nice to sit down and chat with her. And we talked about things like the rising cost of cutting her lawn, right? Mm. She was talking about how the lawn service that she hired um, was, I think, $40 every two weeks. Now, I'll say that from my experience, right, $40 every two weeks sounded like it was the market value. But then you think about someone that grew up in the 30s, right, in the 40s, and the cost God. of $40. And so, you know, that's where I think our more than a meal model actually starts to mean more, right? Our clients are living on fixed incomes. Um, the f price of, like, food right now is so incredibly expensive. So we are not only bringing them a meal, a life-saving safety check, and an opportunity for socialization – we're helping them stretch their fixed incomes further. Yeah. Um, our clients are absolutely incredible, and we are so incredibly like happy that they accept our service and that they welcome us. And our work has a very deep relational aspect, um, and that's something that's really special. Our clients look forward to you know, the individuals, um, they bring their meal each day, whether it's a paid driver in the Providence area or a volunteer statewide. Um, you know, we, we got a letter in the mail the other day from an individual who, unfortunately, her father had passed away. He had been receiving Meals on Wheels. And the daughter wrote us a letter that identified every one of the volunteers that came to her father's door by name. Mm. And she was talking about how her father looked forward to the Meals on Wheels visit every day to the point where then members of his family knew the names of the volunteers. So I could go on and on, but you know, our work is just incredibly special. And as the demand grows here with our aging population, uh, we look forward to being able to continue to grow and increase our services. We're here with Megan Grady, Executive Director of Meals on Wheels, and this is Inside Rhode Island Public Health, presented by Commonwealth Caroline. So let's talk about the highlights. Everybody loves the highlight reel. I mean, you're you're basically spouting off highlight <laughs> after highlight. You're a highlight of of Rhode Island of of humanity. Yes. You know, let's be clear about that too. I mean, yeah. But let's talk about some of the specific highlights that are, um, you know, making their way to you know your. Uh, I don't want to say talking points because that mm -hmm. sounds prepare it but that's yeah. that, that's what you know it's out there in front including this one you delivered 
your 20 millionth home delivered meal. That's 20 million home delivered meals right here in the ocean That's state. That's mind boggling. Yeah, an incredible milestone. So I used to say, right, I joined the organization in 2019, halfway through the year. It's an exciting time for Meals on Wheels. We have done nothing but incredible things for the past 53 years. Right. Like, it's just a joy of an organization to be a part of. So, yeah, we started with 17 seniors, one route in Providence, and we have served 20 million meals here in Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. It's almost like the number is so big that people have to stop and think, 20 million? Is that right? 20 yeah, you got to, like, do the Rhode math Island? to yeah. sit there and, like, all right, what, what is that really? <laughs> How does that play out related to population? Yes. That's so enormous. We absolutely celebrated it, too. Um, two Mondays ago... Governor Dan McKee, Lieutenant Governor Sabina Matos, joined us at Bernadette's home, one of our clients who's over 90 years old. Um, It was myself, those two dignitaries, and Corey McCarty, our board chair. He is also the general manager of Commonwealth Care Alliance, who sponsors the show, and we are just so lucky to have Corey involved in our organization. We all met a couple minutes before noon, um, and entered Bernadette's house with the 20 millionth home delivered meal. She was incredibly excited to have the governor there, the lieutenant governor, members of the press corps, members of the governor's team, lieutenant governor's team. And she had invited many members of her family, her children, her grandchildren. Um, We sat, we chatted, we laughed, and it was definitely a historic milestone for our organization. And we were like it was just so great to be there and to be able to share it with Governor McKee and Lieutenant Governor Matos, who have been great supporters of our work, to have Corey there and sort of his, you know, energy and vision for our future. Um, yeah, and so now we're on to the next twenty million. Yeah. So here we go. What does that look like, right? We have been in a pretty significant strategic planning process. Um, We have started to pilot new things. Um, We introduced culturally responsive menus in January. Um, We know the demographics of our aging population are changing, so we need to be prepared to be able to serve them food that they want to eat that is representative of their culture and their history. So we brought online a Asian meal and a Latin, excuse me, an Asian menu and a Latin menu in January. We evolved our LGBTQIA plus cafe that's meeting monthly at a local restaurant, Blaze Smith Hill. If you're in the area up by Providence College, I definitely recommend you stop in and check it out. Um, We are thinking about how we can evolve our volunteer aspect of our work. Um, You know, Rhode Island's older adults, like we said, the clients we serve are changing differently. Many of our Meals on Wheels volunteers are older adults. Mm. So as people retire later, right, as they continue to help family that have child care needs, um, maybe they've worked longer than they expected to, and so maybe they just want to sit on the Narragansett Beach and relax, right? We have to be able to change our volunteer model. We're trying to become more digital in what we do. That means using a mobile app to deliver Meals on Wheels. We are trying to recruit more volunteers that are representative of the clients we serve. So the person that comes to your door, Bill, looks like you and is representative of your experiences. And so that makes that safety check and that opportunity for socialization go a little bit further. And then we are thinking about this more than a meal model and how we grow and expand it. That means growing from our core and thinking about bringing food to people at home and who else could benefit. That's the reason why we are piloting a meal delivery program to pregnant and postpartum women. Mm. They share many qualities of our older adults. And so when we were approached by Women and Infants Hospital to see if we could do this, we enthusiastically said, let's give it a try. We are serving seven pregnant women at this point and their families to make sure that they have access to healthy, culturally responsive food during their pregnancy and then two weeks after. We also recently started a mobile food pantry pilot program. Um, Many of our older adults tell us, like, you know, one meal a weekday from Meals on Wheels, it's not enough. And so this answers the question, what else do our older adults need? 
So individuals in the Providence area that are served by our paid drivers will be able to benefit from a bag of shelf-stable food. So when we're bringing them their meal, their pet food, other things too. So more to come on that. Um, Our board of directors has really been incredible and under Corey's leadership, really thinking about these next 20 million meals and where we go from here. What a way to frame it as well, the next 20 million meals. And it's a metric that you just hit, so it's totally doable. Um, last 60 seconds here, for you, what is, why does this work change your life? Oh, great question, Bill, and only 60 seconds. So I'll say that when I got involved with Meals on Wheels, it was at the same point in time that my parents had recently retired and they were struggling to keep my grandparents at home. We all grew up in the same neighborhood. My husband and I were down the street from my parents, down the street from my grandparents, and I saw how desperately my grandmother wanted to be at home. Mm -hmm. And so when Meals on Wheels announced a national search for their next executive director, I thought maybe it's me, right? Like maybe it's, it's me, a Rhode Islander here in Rhode Island. Maybe I could help other families manage these complex care dynamics that I saw my own grandparents dealing with. Um, So yeah, that's a little bit about me and my commitment to the mission. Um, And you know, when I when we serve these meals, 1500 meals a day, you know, a couple million meals every couple years, I think about my own parents and I think about my grandparents and I bring that authentic leadership and, and that emotion, that passion to the work. So it's a little bit about me. Megan Grady, Executive Director of Meals on Wheels, Rhode Island. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Bill. At HealthSource RI for Employers, we provide access to health insurance to more than 1,100 local businesses and nonprofits, and 96% of them renew through us every year. Maybe it's our choice of 19 different health plans, our 10 years of customizing solutions, or our one local team of dedicated experts helping employers find quality health insurance. See how our numbers stack up for you. Learn more at healthsourceri.com/employers.